Immigration reform legislation will be introduced with eight U.S. senators in the nation. Provide a path to citizenship for 11 million undocumented. Citizenship should, should transcend pieces of paper. At a hotel in downtown Washington, the undocumented at a conference look for a way to change their status. I can, I can. Jose Antonio Vargas is a journalist, filmmaker, and immigration activist. In an essay in the New York Times two years ago, Vargas revealed he was an undocumented immigrant. It was also a way for him to advocate for the DREAM Act. Later, appearing on the cover of Time magazine, Vargas wrote about the uncertainty of his status. I had a lot of survival, a kind of almost like survivor guilt, you know, especially as it relates to like the young undocumented people, you know, dreamers as they call it, right? Angela Kelly from the Center for American Progress knows that Vargas brings clout to the immigration debate. Jose Antonio Vargas is turbocharging this debate like no one ever, ever could imagine, right? So you have this, this young man who came as a 12-year-old. His mom sent him on a plane, giving him what he thought was a green card so that he could live with his grandparents because she knew there was nothing she could give him in the Philippines that could begin to approach his potential. So he comes here, he learns English by watching Cheers, the Golden Girls. He goes when he's 16 years old to get his driver's license and he realizes, because he's told by DMV, you're here illegally. Vargas became a reporter for the Washington Post and was part of the team that won a Pulitzer in 2008 for covering the mass shooting at Virginia Tech. But his secret was becoming harder to keep and his grandmother was concerned. The first thing she said on the phone call wasn't congratulations. The first thing she said on the phone call was, which means what's going to happen when people find out. I remember just going to the bathroom at one point in the fourth floor of the newsroom and just crying and sitting in the toilet because I just didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> the New York Times article brought him notoriety. Vargas was asked to testify in February 2013 before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Once there's one minute left, it'll turn yellow, just so that you know. Yes. And, it and goes, then I and talked to John about it and he said that even if I go over it's fine. Yes. No, it's not, no, absolutely, the mic will stay live. Uh, Mr. Vargas, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Lee, Ranking Member Grassley, and distinguished members of this committee. Ultimately, it took me 12 years to come out as an undocumented American. And in the past few years, more undocumented people, particularly young dreamers, are coming out, telling the truth about the America we experience. We dream of a path to citizenship so we can actively participate in our American democracy. Vargas made another appearance on Capitol Hill, this time with those he feels a close bond with, the thousands that came to Washington to make their case for legal citizenship. I mean, I'm older than most of them, which is why when the president announced deferred action last summer, I didn't qualify because I was four months the age cutoff. But I feel like somehow we were all in this thing together. Vargas takes certain lessons from history and makes them his own. When I speak in front of crowds, like. I usually end it by quoting Martin Luther King, you know. History will record that in this period of great transition, the strident clamor is not, the strident clamor is not the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. We can't afford for the good people to be silent anymore. We need them to speak out. We need them to be on the right side of history, especially on this one.